So, hello Moving TV fans. Now, before the video begins, this is being recorded. What you're hearing now is being recorded on the 27th of July, 2021. If you follow me on Twitter and you're on my Discord server, you know the pain that has been gone through to get this video to you on YouTube. And even as I'm recording this, I don't even know if it will be viewable on YouTube. But I'm just doing this to explain to you what you're going to hear and why I sound, why it's quieter, why it a lot of stuff that I should mention hasn't been mentioned and, and also the context as to why this video probably sounds and looks a bit different to my other ones. So, for context, I recorded and edited this Doctor Who Series 5 review as usual. You know, I had it ready. I uploaded it and on the first time I uploaded it, it got blocked immediately worldwide by BBC, by the BBC. Now, what they blocked it for was a piece of content that was not featured in the video at all, so there was nothing I could do about it. So I just took the video down, I made a brand new intro, I made a brand new, um, I made a brand new intro for my channel and outro, and at the time I hadn't been implemented into any videos yet, and I had just finished the production on this video. So, therefore, I had no choice but to just not leave it to leave it out of this specific video that I was doing the series five review, and just you know wait for the next you know the series six review essentially. So that's what I did, or for a while. But obviously, I then had the idea. Obviously, I had just completed that making the intro when I got the news that, it, that the series five review had been blocked worldwide. So, in counteracting to that, um, you've probably you've literally just seen the new intro because I placed it in front of in front of this video. So it, you should have just seen the new intro and the new outro will play obviously at the end of this two two hour long video. So, but in, in replacement of that whole situation, I then put the new intro and the outro in front and in front. Or I put the new intro in front and the new outro at the end of the same video or the same trailer and we uploaded it in an attempt to maybe hoping that it would get undetected by the bot it didn't it got blocked again so i'm currently sat here after about three hours worth of having to i posted this on my um i posted this on my discord server if you're interested but basically what i had to do was um i basically had to uh put the intro back in and like i said uh, export that Export that version. Sorry, no. I had to then take it out of that video. Uh, take those two. Take, take the intro and the outro out. Export that version without it because I already did have a previous version of the review without the intro and outro in it. But I deleted it because I didn't think I need it. So I then had to export another version of that, which is the version I'm going to play to you in a second once this is all resolved. Uh, export that video. Um, upload it. Then download it as an MP3 file, and then we record the whole fucking thing on OBS. But as it happens, I've just re-uploaded it. It's public, but you can't see it because it's blocked or wide. And I couldn't read it under as the MP3. So I used my big brain, and obviously I have the video file. So what I'm doing is I've got the new trailer that I'm going to use here, as you're seeing it now. And I'm going to play the audio of. I'm going to play the video in the background uh, of it, the actual edited video that I did, the hour and te uh, the hour and 48 minute long video that I edited, the original version of the video without the intro and the outro in front or behind it. And I am then obviously going to record that in front of this trailer, which is what you're going to hear in a minute. It's a completely different recording, so that's just context as to why it all sounds different and a bit weird. I'm having big issues with the BBC, didn't like it. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that when I upload this, you should be seeing this, and that it was in fact the trailer that I used that they claimed, even though the content that they said it was, which was some episode of Doctor Who Confidential, which I did not use in the video, is not in the video at all. But... I just wanted to get that out of the way before the video starts. So without further ado, here is my Doctor Who Series 5 review. Um, like I said, apologies for the lower quality of the audio and stuff. But um, this has been a, a very painful experience for me. And it really did make me think whether I should continue with the YouTube stuff if it's just going to get claimed. I understand that in my position where I'm a channel that doesn't have a face cam when I just use trailers and footage. So I'm in no right to complain about that. But I, like I said, I don't really, I always get copyright claims. I don't really care about them because I don't, I'm not doing this usually thing to make money off of it. I'm doing it just, just for the fun because I enjoy it and I want to talk about the things I love, movies and TV shows. So that's why I'm doing it. I don't do it to make money. So I don't care if I get copyright claimed. But I do have a problem when I spend four weeks making a video uh, and then it gets blocked worldwide for content I did not fucking use. That's when I really do have a problem with it. But yeah, I just wanted to just have this little pre-intro, this four minute, four or five minute intro, just to let you know what's actually happening and why they sound different. So yeah, I appreciate the way this video has been unusual, and the Series 6 review will take a lot longer but as, as I figure out how to do it, and also Series 7 will be an interesting one, because I, I, I'm either in the state of doing Series 7 as one, Series 7 as two separate parts, 
and then obviously the 50th anniversary specials, the three specials of the 50th anniversary time, will be separate, and I may even chuck in a review of an adventure in space and time, just to make things a bit nicer, who knows. But yeah, thanks for, you know, actually waiting for this video to come out. I, I don't even know if this will be up, so I hope that you're seeing this, but this is my review of Doctor Who Series 5, uh, the first series to star Matt Smith as the Doctor, and yeah, I should shut up now and just play the review. So, without further ado, here is my review of Doctor Who Series 5. Enjoy, and please realise the pain that was m went into making this fucking video. Enjoy the review. How's it going, movie and TV fans? Welcome to something I've been waiting a long time to say. Welcome to the Doctor Who Series 5 review. Now, as I mentioned at the very end of the the, the Series 4, the specials review, and I said I'll talk more about it here, and I am going to, uh, it, if I <laughs> should just make a sense of it, is that the 11th Doctor is my favourite Doctor of all time, and I think Amy and Cl uh, Clara are some of the best companions in all of New Who, so... I'm going to be very biased towards the coming series until we get to the uh, uh, Doctor. In fact, I'm biased towards them because, like I said, eight and nine were the, were the first four series I ever watched all in one go. So, this is going to be an interesting selection. But as I said, the Eleventh Doctor is my favourite Doctor, and I think that shines through the fact that Matt Smith is just absolutely fantastic as the Doctor, performance-wise. He does fantastic. But this is the review of series five, and obviously starting with the very first episode of that series. Um, the 11th hour. So, uh, but before we delve into that, just a quick overview of what's to come with the series, Series 5 as a whole, and, and you know, what to expect. So we've got the 11th hour, the Beast Below, the Victory of the Daleks, the two-part of the Time of the Angels, Flesh and Stone, the Vampires of Venice, Amy's Choice, the two-part of the Hungry Earth, Cold Blood, which by the way was written by Chris Shibb, more current Doctor Who show on them, Vincent and the Doctor, The Lodger, and then the series finale for the Series 5, the two-part of the Pandora that opens in the Big Bang, and then obviously the Christmas special of 2010, A Christmas Carol. So that's what's to look forward to coming forward into this into this series, and might I say, what a series this is going to be, because it's definitely one of the much more enjoyable series of who out there. But let's start with the 11th hour, and I think the 11th hour is an important milestone. It's one of the best episodes of New Hey Who, and what it achieves in the 64, 65 minutes of one time it has is incredible. It sets up the next the new Doctor, the new companions, it shows us what he's going to be like, it can tell us what the companion's going to be like, it does all of those things and set, sets the tone for what's going to go forward in just 65 minutes and I think that's really a feat that that episode really owns itself it, it set up the 11th Doctor era in 65 minutes and I think, not even that, in the first two minutes you have the 11th Doctor right there staring you in the face of what he's going to be like for the whole time and I think that's what makes the 11th Doctor is so fantastic, it's so wonderful, so magical, so filled with fun and joy and I think that's what, like I said, the 11th Doctor has always been my favourite but the 11th Hour as a whole is a fantastic episode, I love the 11th Doctor, Amy and Rory are fantastic here, I think the Atraxi in Prisoner Zero are cool, obviously this, this, this episode has Olivia Coleman, another famous British actress, every time there's a famous British actor and or actress in the doc, in, in the Doctor episode, I will point them out. Uh, that's, for, that's my solemn duty during this entire series to point out any famous British actors that, that at least I know of that took part in the, the Doctor Who series and obviously Olivia Coleman is in this episode of Doctor Who as one of the Prisoner Zero um, thingy my bob tings scheme pop pap tip ting tock no I'm joking as one of the Prisoner Zero duplicate coma patient things but yeah as a whole the 11th hour is absolutely fucking fantastic it, it's one of the best episodes of New Who one of Maximus best episode of Doctor and like I said I had a combo disc that had the end of time as a whole, part one and part two, and this episode on it, and, and um, I'd like to say that I, I rinsed that disc and, you know, watched that disc so much that it stopped working, but that's not true. I only really watched it once I got into Dog 2 and knew exactly what it was, but I've lost it now, so that's fun, but yeah, like I said, episode one of series five, the 11th hour, not only does it set up new, the next Doctor, the new titles, the new sequence and stuff, but it also gives us the first hearing of what is, as of right now, the most played piece of music by Murray Gold on his Spotify account and probably one of the most Spotify profile and one of the most famous pieces of music related to Doctor Who, the incredible four minute and four second long song that is I Am The Doctor, the Series 5, on the Series 5 album, obviously it's the 11th Doctor's theme and it's a fantastic piece and you'll be hearing that for all of this series. Obviously now we're hearing the Doctor Who 11 because that's obviously the Doctor theme and, you, and I play that for this, but there is no going to be no second 
or third song for series five is just going to be I Am The Doctor because it's too good to just not and obviously for series six there are also um, uh, for series six there's actually two pieces that I will use I Am The Doctor in Utah and uh, the, majestic ma uh, tale, the, majest the Majestic Tale of a Madman in a box and um, for series seven it will be Clara which is not my favourite piece but Series 7 is going to be a mod pie, that's all I can say. It's mad, and we're going to enjoy all of it. Probably going to use Hello 12 for that, but yeah. Um, series 5 is a fantastic series of the show. It gives everything, and it does a fantastic job of elevating the series to a whole new level, setting the bar for going forward, setting what Stephen Moffat's writing abilities are and what he will do for the series, and that's something that really needs to be understood as to how good the episode genuinely is it's the new sonic screwdriver that we see here is a fantastic sonic screwdriver I, I love that sonic screwdriver i had that model i had that one when i was a bit younger i suppose and i had that sonic screwdriver specifically and i love that sonic screwdriver so much it's a really good design but um music wise this series definitely got a bit much better i think the music here from this point onwards is very much more orchestral to, to its sound. i think the budget for the music went up a bit during this season and stuff. I, I do know there's a point in time where it did significantly get, as the show goes on, the, the, the budget for the music gets a bit bigger. But here is really where I think that step up is evident from series one through four, and then to series five through or everything in the future is much more or orchestral, letting, letting um, Murray Gold really push his talents to the extreme level that he is physically capable of. And I think that's fantastic. And you know, Murray Gold is a fantastic composer and he does, a brilliant job here of composing the Doctor music from this forward. Obviously, a lot of um, a lot of eleventh uh, Doctor staples are established here. Or see, at the end of the end of time, he says Geronimo. In this in this episode, we see him with the fish, fing fish fingers and crust fish fingers and custard. We also see him say a uh, bow ties a call and stuff. So yeah, a lot of the and he also says I'm the Doctor, but you know that's the thing. A lot of the eleventh Doctor's traits are established here and that's obviously something to keep in mind it established it's an establishing episode it establishes what's going forward not only you know and that's not only because of it's not establishing what has come before it's establishing what's coming forward and it's trying to establish all of the new stuff while n trying to still please the people who believed in the old stuff and i think it does a cracking job of doing that and i think like i said at the end of the day the 11th hour is one of the best episodes of new who in existence and I cannot stress this enough, but it is well worth a watch. I have to admit, it's fucking fantastic. So yeah, I highly recommend it. I, I, I highly recommend Series 5 as a whole, and I think, like I said at the end of the day, it's just a fucking fantastic series of Doctor Who all round, and um, I can't stress enough that it's a super super important series of Doctor Who to really focus on in that it really divided a lot of people to is Moffat good or if is Moffat bad and I'm in the camp that I believe Moffat's a fantastically talented writer who knows exactly what he's doing and uh, stuff like you know the Doctor Dances Blink all of that stuff prove that two part of the Doctor Dances I'm going to call it the Doctor Dances because I can't remember the other, the other one but that two part uh, the Blink all that stuff proves how much of a you know science of the the forest the the library one from series 4 all that stuff proves how good of a writer he can be and how good of a writer he actually is so yeah and uh it's just fantastic to see the series thriving as a whole here series 5 is a brilliant series as a whole and uh you know the characters it brings along amy rory 11 river song all these people that we explore more here and it's fantastic and like i said that i am the doctor piece is woven through and through every single series that Every single Eleventh Doctor series through and through, it's always there. And yeah. It's just a fan fantastic he is honestly my favourite doctor for so many reasons. He he is the madman with a box. That's definitely how I would describe this specific doctor, a madman with a box. And uh, I think there's no better way to describe him than that, and I think this series the series will go on to define him as a whole. Series 7 has never been the best looking back. But I still think there's some positives hiding in all three series of the 11th Doctor. And yeah. I can't wait to explore this series for you guys. And, and you know, look back on how much of a fantastic series that Series 5 actually is.
And yeah, it's, it's, you know, Series 5 is a changing point. Obviously, new showrunner, new, com new, completely new creative team, you know, and I think that's... But when I say new creative team, it's not completely new. There's still a lot of writers from the previous area of the show that write episodes, not to be Chris Chibnall and also Stephen Moffat himself, both people who write episodes for the 10th and 9th Doctor. And uh, although Chibnall never wrote an episode for the 9th Doctor, but Stephen Moffat wrote for 9, he wrote for 10, he wrote for 11, and he wrote for 12. Uh, Chris Chibnall wrote for 10, and he wrote for 11, and he wrote, I think he wrote for 12, I'm not 100% sure, but obviously we know he wrote for 13 because he's the current show, I know in that. But, you know, this is Series 5, gonna be fun. Thank you for, you know, all this Fort and Proof videos has been fantastic, and yeah, coming up right about now is my view of Series 5, Episode 2. The Beast Below, coming at you right about now. Right, so welcome back to the Series 5 review. Obviously, we're looking at Series 5, Episode 2, The Beast Below. Now, <clears throat> uh, it's been a while since I last talked about Series 5, like, in time. Obviously, this is going to be one big video, so it goes out. But in terms of actual time perspective, I'm recording this on the 22nd of July, 2021. So as a result, obviously, it means that... Um... <laughs> Uh, it's been a couple of days, a couple of weeks since I actually fully talked about it, and that's purely because when it comes to, to, to Series 5 and the big change structurally that Series 5 has compared to Series 4, the special than Series 4, is that um, obviously it's a big structural change, so I had to watch three or four episodes in a row to fully be able to push myself to do it, but I only watched 11th hour, which as a result of which means that I don't particularly have the greatest. Uh, ability to review series 5 now so I had to just wait a bit before I felt in the comfort zone to do it and obviously now I'm fully in the zone it's going to be a while and obviously like I said I'm really I was considering you know putting this project on hold the Doctor Who review series just putting it on hold because purely purely because purely because I um was just so uh, just, I felt like, personally, um, that I wanted to, there's so many movies I wanted to review, I've got access to Black Widow, Escape Room, uh, this, uh, Hitman's Last Bodyguard, Space Jam and New Legacy, all that stuff that I can watch now, Spiral, well, I've done Spiral, but you know what I mean, uh, all that stuff I've done now, well, well I've done Spiral now, but I wanted to get the Doctor Who review out, uh, each review out straight after one another, so, as a result of which I, I'm, you know, increasingly find it harder to sit and actually do the Doctor Who stuff. Uh, because I wanted to do the other things, other movies that I've been enjoying and watching quite a lot recently. You know, a lot of the new stuff from the from I've seen in the cinemas, I'm going to see um, The Suicide Squad uh, as soon as well. I saw, the last movie I saw in the cinema was Escape Room Tournament of Champions. Because I adore the, the both those movies, The Escape Room and Escape Room 2. And I, and I do want to review the original Escape, the Escape Room on this channel, but I haven't had a chance to yet and, and I and I think that purely uh, anyway back to the beast below because I've just talked two minutes about absolutely nothing but yeah the beast below I actually think is a very very well scripted episode it definitely does leave a lot to be desired but it also uh, I do like that this series is is setting up the finale very very quickly it did in the 11th hour with the mentioning of obviously the cracking time and then also the mentioning of um the Pandorica will open that stuff is setting up the series 5 finale very well it's also set up here as well at the end there's there's a quick shot of a crack on the spaceship in time so that I do like that it's setting that up nicely and quite quickly I think as a whole the performance of both Matt Smith as the 11th Doctor and Calvin Gillen as Amy Pond are fantastic I do love when the Doctor towards the end of the story whether in the the Tower of London I do like where he starts having an outburst and he goes uh, no human can speak to me today I, I, it just shows how almost emotional this doctor is to, to an extent but I think you know as, as, as an episode the beast below does entertain and it does uh, have an interesting story and outcome and I think like I said it's a very enjoyable episode to watch I think as a whole it's very very um, I, when they sat out on the deck at the very beginning episode it's giving me vibes of uh, oh what was it called let me, 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 It's given me vibes with some Series 1 episodes, uh, The Long Game, specifically The Long Game, but also, to an extent, 
Bad Wolf parting of the ways as well. Uh, and I think that that's an interesting almost callback. There's lots of callbacks to previous series as well. Uh, but yeah, um, it's very much... Uh, lots of callbacks, including a mention, obviously, to the encounter that the Tenth Doctor had with Queen Victoria in Tooth and Claw, and, uh, and I like that. There's obviously a teaser at the end for the next episode, uh, where we're speaking to Winston Churchill, and we see Winston Churchill in his office, and there's a Dalek shadow, and it definitely does foreshadow how that episode's going to be. But as a whole, I think it definitely is an intriguing episode, and I and I think as a whole, it makes a great second episode in a series of a series that I've always loved. And of a set of characters, specifically Amy and the Doctor and Lara and the Doctor, are fantastic sets of characters. Like I said, Eleven is elite. Eleven has the best companions. Fight me. Uh, it's a shame. I would have loved to see Eleven, Amy, and Captain Jack would have been the fucking pinnacle of Doctor Who in history, in my opinion. But um, and as you're hearing now, that the, the one of the best pieces of music ever composed by Murray Gold and his most played song on Spotify, "I Am the Doctor." Like I said, it, it definitely led an era forward and I think after the immediate departure of the 10th Doctor there was a lot riding on this series specifically and Matt Smith as a whole to see if someone else who was once again Matt Smith was fairly unknown at the time and so was Karen Gillan so to have these two unknowns inherit, inherit you know sizable roles in one of the most important television series it's television series in British history uh, and to have one of them previously appear in an episode in the previous ser series it's just mad on a whole new level but yeah it's it's as a whole the episode the beast below i like the concept and i do like the ending where the comparison between the the the, the sea whale at, at the space whale whatever it is and the doctor is very apparent that they're not too dissimilar they are very much almost the same and uh, i like that and that's what amy uses to figure out what to do and i think that's fantastic but yeah like i said this is my review of The Beast Below. Coming up now is my review of Doctor Who Series 5, Episode 3, Victory of the Daleks. An intriguing episode, definitely. And, uh, I, and I think it's the first time that there's been a Dalek one-parter one since since Dalek, I think. Uh, I'm just trying to think of any other one-part Dalek stories. in, in And there isn't really any that comes to mind in Series 3, 3, 4. Like, single-part Dalek stories. There isn't anything. So, yeah, the first single-part Dalek story since Dalek in series 1 which like I said that's one of the best stories of New Who ever period t dot com forward slash but yeah um but yeah coming out now is my review of series 5 episode 3 Victory of the Daleks coming at your screens right about now so enjoy and bye bye Right, welcome to my review of Doctor Who Series 5, Episode, uh, I believe it's Episode 3, yeah, Episode 3. Um, episode 3, Victory of the Daleks. Now, Victory of the Daleks is a very intriguing one for me, as I think, like, like I was just, I was thinking to myself that it's, I think I did mention it in the, uh, view for, um, The Beast Below, that, uh, it is the first single episode Dalek story since Dalek in Series 1. By that I mean it's not a two-part, most Dalek stories tend to be two-parters, obviously, due to the nature and the, and the established, uh, you know, iconography of the Daleks, that most stories involving them tend to either be, you know, uh, tend to usually be two-part, the finales, usually, most of the time. And, and in the case of Series 5, there is not actually another Dalek-related story in Series 5. It's the only story where we get to see the Daleks, and it is obviously the 11th Doctor's first Dalek story. However, when you get to Series 6, there is also a very limited selection of Dalek stories, and I think that was a deliberate choice. Specifically, Series 6 has no returning villains, and I think that was a deliberate choice with Series 6 to sort of flesh out new stories and new characters without having to rely on older villains and stuff, which is what I think makes Series 6 so intriguing. Uh, but of course, uh, obviously the Daleks do feature in the Series 5 finale, the Pandora opens the Big Bang. That's a mention, and obviously in Series 7. Uh, uh, I don't think there is a Dalek story in Series 7 particularly, except for obviously the, the 50th anniversary special. That is Day of the Doctor. But besides that, again, the Daleks are kept to the lowest level uh, in most of the, the, the 11th Doctors. Um, there is obviously the sign of the Daleks as well. Uh, kept to quite a smaller level, and I think that's a good good thing to sort of 
you know, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, open up the door for new characters, new villains. But for for this adventure, the victory of the Daleks is a very, very different spin on the Dalek characters, and I think that makes it ever more unique than than most of the Dalek stories, because it's obviously set the Daleks in obviously you know the the, the World War Two times, and I think that the the character that they I can't remember his name, but um. The, um, the character that the Daleks created, the Professor Guy, I can't remember his name, Bracewell, that's it. I think Bracewell is a very intriguing character, uh, and I think it also shows the 11th Doctor and his ambitions towards the Daleks specifically, and I think that really makes it... And I think that really makes it more fun, I the, like the reveal of the Daleks specifically is really, really well done, and I think that potentially makes the whole story flow better and I think as a story it's really fun and really quite enjoyable. Winston Churchill's cool, um, I like the concept of the type that the void, the void bubble thingies that used to go to space, I like the Nazis, uh, um, the lights being turned on so the Nazis attack and the whole setting of the Daleks in World War II in London with Winston Churchill is just such an intriguing story that I think that makes it one of the more intriguing stories of New Who and I think like like I said it just makes it more intriguing um I just want to talk a little I know it's not it's a bit far off but I just want to talk a little bit about my intentions for series 7 as it's another I think it's the last of series in the New Who that's a bit of a kerfuffle because obviously with series 4 the specials I grouped that as 2009 because the majority of it took place in 2009 and there was obviously two other years but with series 7 but it's between 2013 between 2012 and 2013 and I, I, I'm tempted to put series 7 as 2012 and then uh, this the 50th anniversary specials which are uh, um, which I might do a separate video on the uh, 50th anniversary specials uh, name of the doctor day of the doctor and time of the doctor which are all stories that are on the 50th anniversary collection Blu-ray that I own. So I'm tempted to do them as a separate video. Meaning the playlist is going to be about 13 or 14 videos long. But. But I don't know. So I'll have more information when it comes closer to that time. But yeah this has been my review of Doctor Who series 5. Episode 3. Victory for Daleks. Uh, coming up now is uh, my review of episode 4. Time of the Angels coming at you now. I also do have plans to do the Loki series review now that's concluded. And on the first week after the Doctor Who stuff is completely finished. I already have a selection of a couple of movies and TV shows that I want to do. And those are Loki, Escape Room, Black Widow and Monsters Inc. The first animated movie I review on my channel. So look forward to those coming out as soon as I've got the Doctor Who reviews. But that's not for a very long time yet which is a shame because at least definitely the end of August this is going to be completed by hopefully I, I, I would love to get it done by July, the July but obviously we're nowhere near the completion point for this and I'm going to have to work quite a lot to get it done but yeah right now is my view of episode 4 in the first part of our first 11th talk to 2 parter Time of the Angels Flesh and Stone so coming up right about now Hello and welcome to my review of Doctor Who Series 5 Episode 4, The Time of the Angels The first of a two part episode involving the Weeping Angels of course The second part being Episode 5, Flesh and Stone And um, as an episode, it obviously not only does it give us the reintroduction of the Weeping Angels The reintroduction of River Song as well uh, But yeah, it also gives us the, an interesting take on the angels and I do like the concept of they're surrounded by all the angels but they don't know it which is really really good and I think performance wise everyone's on top form here um, I think I was just thinking about this now and I'm going to mention it that uh, a lot of the 11th Doctor era uses the, uh, well it's two part episodes uh, the cliffhanger at the end of the first part always has the I am the Doctor cue playing as it goes out and I think that's really a, a signature part of this era and obviously the, I'm, the I Am The Doctor piece is a very iconic piece of music for the Doctor Who series and, and, and its use in series uh, 5, 6 and 7 really sort of puts it on the map as an important piece of Doctor Who music and I think obviously like I said it's used in most cliffhangers but here I think the whole episode as a whole is just bounds of fun to enjoy but also quite a creepy atmosphere which is something unique to a Doctor Who episode that 
has been done before, but not it's not explicitly done a lot. And I think the you know, I think the concept of the, of the angels could really be executed and turned into quite a well um, done uh, maze at like a Halloween event at a theme park. I think that could be really well done if it's done properly with the white set of team. I think it could be quite intriguing. But um, I like the whole. This is the second time, like, obviously the whole thing with River is they meet out of time. This is, so, in actuality, for the Doctor, this is the second time he's meeting River. But for for River, um, probably, there's a lot behind it. But obviously, this is the second time the Doctor meets River, because in the timeline of the Doctor and River, we follow the Doctor. Whenever we meet the Doc, whenever we meet River with the Doctor, that'll be the, the next time the Doctor's meet River. There won't be any time in between that we haven't seen. So the next time that the Doctor meets River will be, I think it's the Pandora's Box at the end of Series 5, but uh, it will be the third time they meet. The first time obviously being in the finale, in the Series 4 episode, uh, The Forest of the Dead, the, the one written by Stephen Moffat, <laughs> funny enough, because we have a song, is Stephen Moffat's creation, and The Weeping Annuals is also Stephen Moffat's creation, so to have Stephen Moffat's two big, uh, you know, elements of Doctor Who that he created that left behind The Weeping Angels and River Song to be combined into one episode. Pretty good. But um, as a whole, the series so far has been really fantastic. This episode is, is enjoyable because it's good to see uh, River Song and, and the length of Doctor bouncing off each other as well as having Amy be there and do some intriguing things and obviously the concept of her of the angel being stuck in her eye and stuff which we'll learn a little bit more as we go on but uh, it's sort of teased here a bit. It's an interesting one but yeah. It's just a fun episode overall, and I think it, as a two-part, we introduced it, both the Angels and River Song. It does its job perfectly. I think Alex Kingston is wonderful as River Song, as always. Uh, I think, I think as a whole, the two-part is fantastically fun, and and it also you know leads a lot of. <sighs> It, it does leave a lot of desire in it, but obviously there's a second part to deal with all of that. And I think that it's very well executed, and it's a fantastic... <laughs> it's just most... I think with Series 5, a lot of the episodes are more, really, like, actually quite good. And then there are a few that are above and beyond, but they're mostly on the same level of being actually really quite entertaining and enjoyable, you know. The, the, the only ones that come to my mind that are really above and beyond the other episodes for me, really, is just, I think, the 11th hour... Hungry Earth and the Cold Blood, and then The Lodger, which is also a, a quite a fun episode, but I think the best episode of Series 5 will always be The 11th Hour, as it's fucking amazing. But, um... <laughs> but, yeah, um... It's just a bit... You know, it's a very fun episode. It's very enjoyable. Most of the episodes are quite enjoyable, and I think that that, you know, is an important concept to remember. Uh, that they are wholly enjoyable episodes, um, and I think most of of who is enjoyable. But yeah, this has been my review of Doctor Who Series 5 Episode 4, The Time of the Angels coming out now is my review of Doctor Who Series 5 Episode 5, Flesh and Stone coming at you right about now. Yo, it's uh, my review of Doctor Who Series 5 Episode, let me have a look on, on here, uh, 5 Flesh and Stone, the second of the two-part selection that is Flesh and uh, the time, the time of the Angels, Flesh and Stone, and I think, like I said, I've explained this numerous times before, but when it's a two-part, it always has that you know unfortunate effect of the first part setting it up, and then the big twist happens at the end, and then the second part is redeeming all of that shit and stuff, and that's very much the case for series for for this two-part. It's the standard time of it, but I think. What makes it so more interesting is its place, its setting, and I think that the the, the the forest set with the electronic trees is one of my favourite set pieces of the Doctor Who. It looks really fucking good, like on screen, 
and um, I like the concept of the crack in the wall from Amy's uh, room in the, in the 11th hour, which is going to, you know, potentially... There's the first mention of the Pandora here, I think. Uh, well, it might be in the 11th hour, I'm not 100% sure, but obviously... That leads right up to this series' finale, the Pandora opens in the Big Bang. But at the same time, it also leads the characters down a path that intrigues everyone as we go through. And there's obviously a lot more to go when it comes to the series in these episodes. There is, uh, you know, obviously we've got the Vampires of Venice next, which we have one of my favourite TARDIS teams that starts in that episode. And that's uh, Rory, Amy, Eleven, which is just a fantastic selection of people. And they're obviously in the Vampires of Venice and Amy's Choice before. Uh, I don't think we meet Rory again until the Pandora opens the big fucking bang but yeah um it's just a, uh it's, it's just an all-round fun two-part i think the role that river song plays in both parts is fantastic and i think at the same time amy's role especially in the second one where obviously the actress being karen gillen has to do most of that episode with her eyes shut which it's tremendous effort from an actor to be able to actually pull that off so give give karen gillen some credit she's a fantastic actress she does a great job here as as Amy, and be sure to check her out in upcoming movies like Gunpowder Milkshake, you know, now on Netflix in America, and, uh, coming to the But yeah, it's, it's, it's just a movie that I think very much... of the Doctor being the big brain boy. But I think, uh, as I said, Eleven definitely shines a lot more here with Matt Smith's portrayal and performance. It seems where he really, I like it when he gets shouty because it really shows Eleven's full palette of emotions. But he's definitely that category of the mad man with the box who just goes around doing all the things and, and, and tends him more controlled. Eleven just, fuck it. Which is what I like about Eleven. But obviously it's great to see River Song, And, um, you know... There's a mention of Rory, and obviously the ending of this episode is... Well, to put it bluntly, Amy tries to fuck the Eleventh Doctor, and it doesn't quite go the way she wants. So, uh, and, uh... Yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> ending for a TV show, right? But, um... Which then leads to what we can, what we do know is then the start of the Vampire Sirens, but we're not quite at that point yet, so... Yeah. That's been my review of episode 5, Flesh and Stone. I hope you have enjoyed this episode so far. This has been a very long in the making uh, episode of the review series. Um, uh, it's going to take a very long time to come out. It's going to be, I feel like already, it's going to be a bit longer than the other ones. So that's fun. But probably because I have a lot more to say when it comes to the 11th Doctor being my personal favourite Doctor. So, like I said, I just think Eleven is so fun. The costume's brilliant. Uh, Matt Smith is a very talented actor. And I think he's just fantastic as a Doctor. He's always been my favourite Doctor because he has that quality that most Doctors try to have. And that you could say have to an extent, like Tennant with the... With the I'm a happy-go-lucky person, but if you piss me off, you really, really, really really piss me off and you don't want to see that and I think Tennant had that to, to quite a lot of degree but Matt Smith I feel like has that a bit more than has it has it more but it comes out a lot less than it did with Tennant. It came out quite quite often with Tennant but with Eleven it barely comes out which is what I think is the most intriguing. But yeah we've got up next with the Vampires of Venice which is a very different episode. Um, recently the actress who played the main um, lady vampire recently passed away so to that lady but um, yeah this is my view of Episode 5 Flesh and Stone coming right now is my review of Series 5 Episode 6 The Vampires of Venice coming at you now. I really hope you've been enjoying this stuff and yeah, this has been fun. Thank you and you know, yeah, here's my review of Vampires of Venice coming at your screens now. Right, so, Series 5, Doctor Who Series 5, obviously, no shit, Sherlock, uh, but, oh, Jesus, uh, <laughs> Doctor Who Series 5 Episode 6 The Vampires of Venice. Venice, and um, now this episode is just the start of what would almost be a mini arc between Rory, the Doctor, and Amy, and essentially Rory and the Doctor fighting over Amy, not really fighting, but Amy having to then choose between the two of them, and then, you know, sort of, the, and it's an interesting dynamic, and I think, like I said, I do love the three of them as a TARDIS team together, they're fucking funny, they're fantastic, and Rory does 
the thing I like about Rory is that he really turns out to be quite a valuable asset to the Doctor, and he's not. And I think it's a very stark contrast to how Nine and Ten treated their companions' respective boyfriends. I mean, specifically Nine, who treated Mickey like a piece of shit, but Mickey was really, really, actually, an important person. As you go on to find in the tenth, and sure, Ten, Ten still, Ten treated him a lot better than Nine did, but I, I think they're still <laughs> Ten thought that Mickey was subpar, but I think with, with with Eleven and Rory, there is a level of respect, at least from the Doctor towards Rory, even if there isn't between Rory and the Doctor, there's still a level of respect, the Doctor respects Rory's position with Amy, I think which is which is a lot better than it is, and obviously I think Rory and Doc and the Doctor, uh, as their relationship goes on between the two of them, you can clearly see that those two would definitely go down to the pub and have a pint together while Amy's off doing whatever, but you can, I can see that happening with those two while I don't know, while Amy's chatting with, with River or something like that, because, you know, that kind of dynamic would be funky, but um, you can see that happening, and I think the Vampires of Venice definitely proves that point of the three of them being absolutely just fucking fantastic together, and I think the rest of the series goes on to prove that too, I think. Um, like I said, Rory's just one of my favourite companions, I think the three of them, like I said, Eleven, Amy, and Rory, and I was saying to, from my, my, to myself throughout this entire episode that if, and this would have been so cool, if you had te uh, you had Eleven, Amy, Rory, and Captain Jack in the same room in a scene, that would have just been fucking at the, the pinnacle of Doctor Who, I'm sorry, and then maybe even uh, Twelve, Clara, and Jack would have been even funnier, I think both those two things would be cool, I'm sure I wouldn't mind seeing Eleven, Clara, and and Jack, but I think it would be funny seeing 12 Clara and Jack because I can I can picture the interactions between 12 and Jack and it would just be so funny. But yeah, we'll get to 12 when we get to 12. But yeah, Vampires of Venice is a story it is very much it's very much a unique story. I think it's told very very well, and I think that's really what gives it that level of what rewatchability because it's actually really fun. I think the the concept of being stuck in ancient uh, you know in um, Venice in the 1500s is cool and I do like the ending where the uh, the lady lady person uh, tries to tell the doctor oh you're gonna commit genocide twice sort of thing and I like that sort of call back to the time war and all that stuff and I think that's fantastic and there's a lot of instances where this sort of occurrence of references to the time war occurs and I think that's really what sets this episode apart I think But yeah, um, I think Vampires of Venice is a solid, solid episode. It's very much a episode that personally, to me, shows the importance of the three of them together and how Amy can really hold her own, but also how Amy really has the control over those two. It's not that the Doctor's in charge or or Rory's in charge or Amy's in charge. Amy, like, at least when it comes to the more intriguing moments, Amy knows what she's doing. She's definitely got control of both of them. Not in a, they're both in love with her way, in a way that she's she's the boss lady and the other two are just her <laughs> um, workers. And I think that really shines in some scenes here and in future episodes, as I say. And I think the two of them, you know, the three of them work together so fantastically. I like the concept of the, the being, uh, the, the, that the, these vampire riot aliens they came to a, one of the cracks in time and that only the 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 um, children only the male children survived the journey so obviously they need to conjure up some new uh, you know thingies for the new um, females for them to uh, you know create to continue their race with that's what is needed and obviously it's what they tried to do and failed here and um And yeah, it's just a really fun episode. Murray Gold, again, on par with the music here. Fantastic shit. But yeah, it's just an all-round fantastically fun episode. It can be enjoyed by everyone. I think it's it's definitely an episode that uses... It. I like the character of Guido as well. I think that's his name, the, the guy that blows himself up. He's quite fun and funny as well at points. And I do like the scene where the doctor goes, Brain thinking, stop talking, Brain thinking, hush, to, all, to, to, to Amy. And then he goes, stop talking, Brain thinking, hush, to Roy. And then he goes... And then the Greedo starts talking, and then Doctor goes Matt to, to Rory, and then Rory puts his hand over the Greedo's mouth. It's fucking funny. And as a whole, it's just a fantastic episode. I do like the opening where uh, <laughs> the Doctor pops out of uh, Rory's, uh, the cake at Rory's stag do, and I think that's really a funny gag that is just hilarious. But yeah, that's been my view of 
Vampires in Venice. Coming up now is my review of episode 7, officially halfway through this series. This is back to being a 14 episode series, so yeah, halfway through the series is episode 6, The Vampires of Venice. Episode 7, Amy's Choice, one of the most bizarrely interesting episodes. And I feel like an episode that also does, which I don't think it is very notable, because it's not pointed out much, but it's one that definitely does try to change the structure of a Doctor Who episode, and it does it quite well, but we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get to it. Yeah, so my view of episode 7, Amy's Choice, coming at you right about now. Right, so episode... Seven. Amy's fucking choice. Now, this is a spicy episode. And that's purely because, much like, you know, you know, much like... Let me get to Much like uh, Love and Monsters before it, much like uh, Blink before that, and, and, you know, you know, much like all those episodes that are in Midnight, Turn left, blink, love and monsters, much like all those episodes. A- Amy's Choice is another episode that tries to change the structure of Doctor Who in, a, in, in an interesting way. Obviously, as we've learnt, the episode that's done that the best is Blink, followed shortly by uh, Unicorn Boy Midnight, which is an interesting episode, and so is Turn Left at the same time. But uh, and then obviously we know that Love and Monsters failed that completely. But here with Amy's Choice, it again works. And it works quite well, not as well as it did with Blink or with uh, Midnight and stuff, but it works quite well. And I'm happy to say that it's very, very enjoyable episode. It's extremely fun, and uh, it's a, it's. <coughs> it's a thrilling adventure. It adds. <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for here? It adds. A certain panache, and I like the concept that towards the end that we find out that the Dream Lord is in fact the Doctor. And I just want to touch on a note that I think is really worth talking about because it's incredibly worth deserving talking about it. And I think it's just one of the most, the best parts of this episode. Uh, But yeah, I think that the the Dream Lord, as we find out, uh, obviously is a version of the Doctor, and obviously he's portrayed with absolute menace and fantastic, you know, fantastic by uh, Toby Jones, who's another you know famous uh, actor to be in Doctor Who. And uh, I think out of all the famous actors we've seen, to, um, at least one of which actors we've seen in Doctor Who, his is one of the performances that actually stands out to be one of, if not the single best uh, performance in, in, of another actor in Doctor Who. And like, like when he stands alongside um, Matt Smith, and, the way he portrays it is absolutely fantastic. The Dream Lord is. And obviously, um, the Dream Lord is obviously the darker side of the Doctor. Uh, due to some pieces of psychic pollen being stuck in the time rotor of the TARDIS console. And uh, obviously it induced the dream state for the Doctor, Rory and Amy. And uh, obviously not being able to feed off of Amy and Rory. Uh, uh, obviously not being able to form off of Amy and Rory, it immediately forms itself off of the Doctor, you know. And, uh, you know, it sits in between two worlds in Upper Ledworth and then the Cold Star destroying the TARDIS. And I think it's a fantastic concept, incredibly well executed, with absolute fantastic people, both the writing team and the acting team. And I think it, it stands as an episode that really marks a departure in Doctor Who of, of trying to change the way it, an episode is structured. And it also definitely is another one that brings up the main focus, focus point of the relationship between the Doctor, uh, Rory and Amy, and Amy having to choose between Rory and the Doctor, who ultimately we find out towards the end of the episode that she pretty much chooses Rory because obviously when Rory dies in the Ledworth world, she decides to, um, she decides to, uh, she decides that's the fake world and that she, uh, they both kill themselves and wake up in the real, in that, in the the world with the parallel star, with the star crashing into the, uh, the TARDIS, the ice star. But then the Doctor then, once the Dream Lord retreats, the Doctor then realises that obviously that both of them 
our dreams and he then blows the TARDIS up and they all survive because it was little spikes of pollen things in the TARDIS that fucked the whole thing up and corrected the Dream Lord in the first place and obviously there's that little teasing glimpse that we see the Dream Lord appear in the TARDIS, TARDIS console bay again but I would love to see the Dream Lord come back again it's one of my favourite villains of the series in fact may be my favourite villain of the series the series. This episode is one of my favourite episodes of this of this series, and um, yeah, it's just a fantastic episode that that really pushes everything to the limits of both production wise uh, the locations of Ledworth is really cool and I like the, the aliens in Ledworth but at the end of the day it's also just a very well structured episode and it's fantastic so yeah thanks for watching my review of Doctor Who series 5 episode 7 uh, Amy's Choice like I said series 5 is always one of my favourite series it's, it's a really decent and consistent series and that's what I love in this series of Doctor Who it and series 6 are very quite consistent series with most of the episodes are actually quite good and then there's some that are above and beyond the rest you know obviously notably obviously the 11th power amy's choice the hungry earth cold blood two part uh, are the ones that are above and beyond the rest in my opinion the logic coming closely behind that and the rest stay on a singular pl plane of existence as being all on par with each other i think personally including the christmas special and christmas cow but and i think the same can definitely be said for I don't know if I can say that for Series 6. I know there's a lot of positives in Series 6, including a nice performance by uh, your boy, your boy David Williams, and also the return of uh, James Corden's character in Closing Time, which is another quote episode. But Series 6 as a whole can be very different, and I think the same with Series 7. But Series 5 is definitely the most consistent series for the 11th Doctor, with most of it being on the same plane. And then stuff like, you know, obviously 11th Hour, Amy's Choice, and then Hungry Earth, Cold Blood on a separate plane of just being almost essentially God to Who episodes, specifically 11th Hour being one of, if not the single best episode of Doctor Who, and I still stand by my statement to this day that I think the 11th Hour, other than say, you know, um, the Day of the Doctor is probably my single favourite episode of the entire run of the 11th Doctor, although I do, you know, I... Uh, I do think that, you know, all this series is interesting, and I will say series 5 and 6 are the most interesting, but there we go, thanks for watching my review of uh, that episode, uh, episode of... Um, my view of Amy's Choice, come out now as my view of episode 8, The Hungry Earth, the first of two parts, the return, this is obviously the, 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 the Hungry Earth and the Cold, and cold Blood are the two part that ha was chosen obviously to bring back a classic alien after series four knows not series four that's a lie series four did bring back one uh, uh you know and then series six i think oh, after obviously series three didn't bring back any pre-existing uh aliens other than you know obviously the daleks having all the episodes and stuff like that but uh obviously that was the chosen and the chosen aliens were of course the silurians so um you know obviously one of the Silorians goes on to become an integral part of the Pathmaster gang but we'll get to that when we get to that fam and with, when I say that I mean the next Christmas special this, I think they're in the snow yeah I'm in the snow man. and Deep Breath as well Deep Breath is fucking fantastic but we're not quite there yet so let's just focus on the now instead of the future but yeah Thanks for watching this 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 part of this review coming at you now is my view of like I said episode eight the hungry earth coming at you right about now. This is eight minutes long, so yeah, this is definitely gonna be a longer review view of the series. Thank you and coming out now is episode eight The Hungry Earth now. Right, so we're back with Doctor Who series five episode seven eight seven eight 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 the hungry earth the return of the silurians and an actually very very enjoyable episode one of my more favorite of episodes of this series as a whole i think it's a fucking fantastic episode uh, i like the concept 
of the earth stuff and the silence being under the earth i think that's really really cool i like the stakes are high here because not only do have we lost amy already which is the, probably the biggest for doctor there's also two humans down there so the stakes are high they also have a hostage of their own i know how the episode turns out and i think it's an interesting twist of fate and stuff and i think it works well and um i i just think that the silurians and, and how it how it the second part obviously is always a more enjoyable and it is for me because it, it really explores the silurians as a species and how they're not all the same some of them are peaceful species but uh, some of them are peaceful some of them are warriors and i think that's really well explored in the second part of this episode specifically but the first part is still interesting obviously being set in wales there are a few Welsh people in it and that's obviously i was just thinking that it's funny there hasn't been an episode that's probably been set in Wales since the 2005 revival as that i'm aware of other than this one you know uh, because you know rtd ross to davis is from wales and doctor who is predominantly themed at bbc cardiff in wales um but yeah, it's just a, it's a really, really fun episode. I really think this is one of the better episodes of Series 5. This two-part is really fun. And of course, if you don't know, this episode was written by uh, an interesting figure in the Doctor Who universe. Um, fans of Doctor Who might know him as someone that they uh, don't have the most favourability for at the moment. But I still think he's written some very, very good episodes for not only the newest series of Who, but beyond that into previous episodes, and that is of course, Chris Chibnall, who wrote this episode. So, um, you know, Chris Chibnall is the current showrunner of Doctor Who, after taking over from the showrunner at the time these, these episodes were airing, airing uh, Stephen, Stephen Moffat, so another interesting guy, but you know, Chris Chibnall wrote for 10, and he does go on to write quite more episodes for series um and he writes the series 7 episode um uh dinosaurs on a spaceship and uh also he wrote power of three which is not too fun um and then i don't think he would write again until series the series um, 11 Yeah, no, I don't think he does write into, again for Doctor Who until Series 11. Which is weird, really. But yeah, um, it's just a fun-filled episode. I think it's... It's a fantastic episode of New Who. I really, really think it's just really... Obviously, the second part is better, but... To the whole thing at the end where we see... Rory and Amy from the future is really fun. But I also think... Eleven is on top form here. Amy, for the about 10 minutes of screen time she gets is on top form um, Rory is <laughs> underrated in this episode I think he's actually really quite good here but I think a lot of a lot of it really stems from having a nice selection of characters this small group of characters in this small town really helps the episode there isn't anyone else that comes in really other than obviously this is how learns but there's obviously you know Amy and Rory and Doctor and the other family the, the small world family there's about four of them uh, you know the mum the dad who's underneath the wall, who's underneath the uh, ground, the son who also gets taken underneath, um, and then obviously the grandfather of the child, father of the mother, and then his uh, fiance, girlfriend, wife, I don't know, one or the other. So it's a very intimate cast of characters that has a small selection that I think really helps in the story. And obviously that whole typical point of it being the humanity's best really helps the episode pull its story out and I think you know as a concept it's really really well done I think Chris Chibnall's writing skills here and with some of the more recent episodes are actually quite decent don't hate me but yeah I just think as a whole it's just an interesting one isn't it it's just an intriguing, um, you know, an intriguing selection. But yeah, as I said, it's, 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 it's just a very, very good episode. I think as a whole, it, it really, um, it 
it's just a fantastic episode, really. I think it's, it's really just fun. I think it's just a genuinely a really enjoyable episode. And it's just all... You know... It's a fantastic fun episode. I really... Really do enjoy it. And I think... That's a two part. It's one of my favourites of this series. And it really just... You know, unfolds well, well written, quite enjoyable. But yeah, it's just a fun all round episode, and uh, the two part is fantastic as well. Yeah, it's just all round fantastic episode, and I think, like I said, it really earmarks the the you know the intriguingness of it, and I think that's what really makes the episode so fun. It's just really, really enjoyable, and I think it's just what the fuck. Yeah, it's an all-round just fun episode. And, like I said, it, it just really, really... It's just a fun all-round episode. What more can I say? And I've said that about six times already, but it really is just one of the better episodes of the Series 5. It's well-structured, written, edited, you know, all that stuff. Music again on top form by Murray Gold. It's just an all-round brilliant, brilliant episode, and I can't really deny the importance of it, and bringing this other ones back is a fantastic idea. But, yeah... This is my view, Doctor Who, Series 5, Episode, uh, let me get this up, Episode uh, 8, The Hungry Earth, coming up now, my view, Episode 9, Cold Blood, coming at you right about now. Right, so, my view, now, for Series 5. One day, I will get the audio levels right for these reviews. What, one day, one day, not today one day but also if you haven't already please go check out my new twitter account that i rebranded from the previous lamp account where i just post shit it's called mike Wazowski in real life and the at is at flying jumbos oh please check that shit out I, I i don't put effort into it but it's funny and if you actually want to see my thoughts and thoughts and feels on twitter that account is where you go because i'm not just i will post shit but i'll also post like there's a few tweets that I post about my actual feelings towards certain things like this, but I'm glad I discovered Escape because it's a really good film movie and the sequel Tournament Champions is good too. So, while I will post shit sometimes, I'll also post my opinions on a lot of stuff as well, so do check that out. Um, please. Please. Um, uh, no, uh, so yeah, we'll... Away from that, we're on Series 5, Episode 9, Cold Blood. Now, as obviously is known, the second part to an episode like the, to these two parts is always significantly better. But I think here there is a significant jump between quality between the first and the second. A lot of the action and the actual tension definitely takes place in this second episode, opposed to the first one. The first one still has a lot of impactful moments in it, but this the second one that really, like, for instance, the moments where the where the captured alien gets killed, where Warby dies, the bit where he finds the TARDIS thing, uh, the, all the conversations between the humans and the Silurians. It's a fantastic, fantastic episode. Definitely better than the previous episode, in my opinion. And I think, as a whole, it's just an episode that, that, that really... is just so well executed. I know I say this a lot, but it really is quite well. I have to admit, this is Shidmore's probably the best episode he's ever wrote of Doctor Who. Some of the newer stuff, I think, mm, it's okay, but does it really come up to how this... Let me just check. So, I mean, I really liked... Uh, I think Women to Who Earth is alright. I think Rose is really good, but I don't think he wrote that. Let me just check, let me just check, actually. Because I don't think he wrote Rosa, which is probably... Probably why. 
you know, it's good because he didn't. I'm joking. Anyhow, um... But yeah, so like, for instance, he wrote with me for the photo, I thought it was alright, ghost mod. My memory was okay. Oh, he did partially wrote, uh, he wrote words, but mostly it was written by a famous author, uh, Maria Blackman, so I think we're going to give her most of the credit for that. Um, that is in the UK, it's boring, the Sinandric. Actually, one of my favourite episodes of that series is Kablam, and it wasn't even written by him, so that, that says enough. Um, the rest of series 11 is a bit, I mean, resolution's good. And then series series 12, I mean, Spyfall Part 1 and 2 were really, really good. Future of the June was written by someone else as well as him, so I don't really count that. So yeah, I, it really definitely is his best episode of new of who that he's written personally. But yeah, as a whole, it's really just fantastically fun episode and. Um, I just think, as a whole, it's just one. Sorry about all the pauses. I'm just trying to do stuff. But I think, as a whole, the cast is really cool, and I want to just um, highlight the specific character Ambrose. And I think I want to give her actress a really credit because she genuinely is very much a character that you can enjoy. But I think she's very hateable, and not, but not as in bad guy hateable, as in hateable by her decisions and what she does, sort of hateable. Like a very dislikable character, and a character that I do end up hating, but it's not for the reasons that she's specifically trying to be bad, it's just that her actions are really bad for... actions have really bad consequences. And I think all the actresses playing the Silurians, actors and actresses playing the Silurians, did really well to, to stand in all that, in that makeup for that long, and I think, you know, I think it is cool. Obviously we do see Mostly we see female, well actually it's half and half because you see Alea and then you see this one, Frostcat, or whatever her name is, and then you see the two male ones, the, the head guy and then the, the scientist guy, so it's a 50-50 split, but uh, like I said, all of them do fantastic to be in that makeup for that amount of times and they still look pretty flawless while portraying their characters, and I think it definitely adds that stingish to Series 5 that is really fantastic, and um, obviously we're, we're more than halfway through at this point, we're coming to the later half, of series 5 now we've just got I'm hoping to get this done by today which is the 24th of July by the way uh, I, I, I'm hoping I, I think I can get it done before the scheduled live stream for this evening I hope so anyway yeah so I've got Vincent the Doctor, the Lodger, the Pandorica open the Pandorica opens, Big Bang and Christmas Carol 47, 43, 50 50 fucking hell 55 minutes it's cringe and then 62 minutes for the finale. So yeah, I think we can get it all done nice and quickly. This review is going to be very much longer than the others because we've only just halfway through and it's reached an hour already. So it's going to be quite lengthy, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching this far into the video. Do follow that epic Twitter account, please. I, I need I need a follow. And also, by the way, if, if this entitles you to follow, it should. The real life, actual, verified John Cena Twitter account, the real John Cena, follows that account. So if anything's entitled to you to follow that account, it's the fact that the real John Cena approves of that account. <laughs> well, he follows it anyway. Uh, that's the biggest person that follows me ever on a Twitter account, so that's kind of epic, but yeah. Go follow that account and stay tuned for the rest of this video. Coming up now, my view of Doctor Who Series 5, Episode 9. Got it right? No, 10. Vincent and the Doctor. Coming at your faces right about no, 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 now. Alright, so, welcome to the review of Doctor Who Series 5, Episode... Episode 10, Vincent and the Doctor. It's a very profound story. It's a... It, it's a story that 
has a lot of emotional weight and it's one of those stories that when watching it I really am taken out of the fact that all of it's not particularly you know real and all that and the, the actor playing Vincent van Gogh isn't actually Vincent van Gogh but, but when you're actually watching it you're taken out of it and, and you really feel like this is the real Vincent van Gogh and stuff and I think Amy and the Doctors what the role they have on the final few years of van Gogh's life at least in this version of the story seems a bit intriguing and obviously Amy f uh, forms a quite intriguing relationship with the good Vincent who uh, you know I think they're all an interesting selection it's, it's a great it's an episode that definitely has a lot of trying to hints towards what had recently occurred events for Amy such as you know obviously the loss of Rory where there's one point where the doctor literally calls Vincent Rory uh, which is unusual but yeah it's just a really fun episode for me and I think it's really just a representation of that kind of you know that kind of involvement and that kind of sort of pushing forward the the story canon per se for something of the statue and I think as a story it works really well as a as an adventure it works really well I think the the, the concept of the uh, the main villain being uh, invisible to most people is almost a lot of people look at that as a cost saving way to to you know bring costs down but in reality that actually kind of doubles the cost because you also have to have actors pretending to fight the fight fight this visible alien but because Van Gogh can see it you also have to take into account the cost required to actually make a CGI version that pops up a few times when Van Gogh sees it or when we see it from Van Gogh's eyes and stuff like that so it still does cause an effect on the budget and it's not all completely just no one else can see it and we, and we never see it sort of thing which is really cool and I think I think as a whole it's just a really fantastic episode. All the actors do a fantastic job. The, act, the actor playing Van Gogh is fantastic. And obviously, uh, um, and obviously uh, you have uh, the famous British actor in it, uh, Bill Nye, as uh, Doctor Black. Apparently, he's uncredited. Fun. But um, I think it's just an interesting episode. Obviously, there was images of the first and second Doctor displayed on the mirror device when he uh, prints out from the TARDIS type eye. Right? But it's a really interesting DVD. It's just, um... It's a really fun episode, I can't really tell you. Just any more than that. It's a really enjoyable episode. It's quite intriguing and I think the... What it does for... The idea of not a villain you can't see, or, or an antagonist that you can't see, because by the end of, of the the episode, we realise that it's the thing is only scared. It's not actually trying to kill people. It was just scared, and it was actually deaf and stuff. But yeah, it's just an enjoyable um, episode all around, and I think yeah, it's just really fun. That's what I can't really say more than it is really fun. And um, I think, again, Mario Guys music is always fantastic. I always, I just want to mention that I don't think I've mentioned it that much before, but it's very apparent, at least to me, and I'm pretty sure a lot of others, that the, the budget for music, what, doubled, tripled in the jump from Series 4 to Series 5, because the music qu quality and value here is so much higher than it was for Series 4 and 5. Not that Series 5 and 4 soundtracks were bad, but in terms of the quality, obviously, with series four and five, it sounds like he all recorded it in one place on his on his own with some keyboards and some sample effects and stuff, and maybe an orchestra here and there for for stuff like the the Valdezium tracks and stuff like that. But with series five, it's an all out orchestral soundtrack with orchestral music and an orchestra clearly playing it and stuff like that. And that's what really I think is the ele elevation that 
did the music routine. Obviously, a whole new era needed a whole, a whole new style of music, and I think from this point on with the music, it's very cinematic, very cinematic music, and, and, and I do even mean that for some of it. I think it's very cinematic music all the way up to series um, 10. Which obviously has a soundtrack release, which is funny. And then series 11 and 12's music, while not as cinematic, is much more down to earth and a representation of what the show is supposed to be. The show that's on earth, sort of, you know. Um, you know what I mean? It's much more a down to earth approach to the music in series 11 and 12, but we'll talk about that when we get to it with the great Sega Nakanova. But um, Murray Gold is just a fantastic composer. But yeah, it's an all-round, um, I, as I speak to you now, or, or, as I'm recording this from the, at 6.30pm on the 24th of July 2021, it has just recently come to my attention that the Doctor Who Twitter account has just posted a fun fact fanatical tweet, uh, which, uh, ju just recently, uh, at the time of recording, it was posted, uh, 30 minutes previous, so at 6 o'clock, uh, because, um, exactly... 24 hours from when it was posted, the Doctor Who panel at San Diego Comic Con at home is taking place tomorrow at 6 p.m. BST. So, um, yeah, that's going to be interesting for Series 12 and, and so on and so forth. Series 12, Series 13, and we we imagine a lot of people are imagining that there will actually be a Series 13 uh, trailer reveal at this event, which I'm pretty sure it will be at this point. It would just be stupid not to have such a thing. But yeah. As I say that, that could always happen. That's an interesting thing. But yeah, thanks for staying this long in the video. I appreciate it because this video is going to be twice as long as any of the previous ones. Because it's already an hour long and we've still got a couple of episodes left. So... So yeah, I just think it's a fun episode and I can't wait for that announcement tomorrow. But yeah, coming up right now is my view of Doctor Who Series 5 Episode... Uh, 11, The Lodger, then we have obviously, actually there isn't too many episodes left, there is The Lodger, The Pandora Opens, The Big Bang and The Christmas Carol, so I'm hoping to get this all done by the end of this evening, on the 24th of July, but I don't think I'll have it up by today unfortunately, it will definitely go up tomorrow. But it could go up today, just saying. Anyway, thank you for watching, and yeah, stay tuned for my review of series uh, 5, episode 11, The Lodger, which is one of my favourite episodes of this series, but yeah, review coming now. Well, so, Doctor Who series 5, episode, I believe this is actually episode 11, because my dumb brain is stupid, and Paul Vincent and the Doctor was actually episode 10, and Cold Blood was episode 9, but I'm very wrong. This is actually episode 11, The Lodger, starring um, your boy, oh, what's his name? James Corden as Craig, and I think this is the story this one tells. I suppose it's one that I you could make a case for that it, it tried to change the structure of Who, but I, I think the only case you can make in in in, in the event of that it, it is just that it is an episode without Amy, and that's literally all I can say about it. Changing the structure of who's an episode where one of the companions is left on the ship and the doctor has to do all his work on his own. That's literally it. That's all I can say about how it's different. But yeah, it, it's just an episode that I think has just a really cool concept to it. And I think at the end of the day, I think performance-wise everyone was fantastic. I like the concept of the Doctor becoming he or not actually human, like in human nature and family blood, but but more in that he try he has to try and become human for it for a while to understand what's going on in the room. And I like the whole concept that there is no second floor perception filter stuff. That's really quite cool, I think. And um, I think at the end of the day, 
Uh, it's obviously an episode that was fairly successful because it did, because the character of Craig did return in, I think it's in series 6 or 7. I think it's 6 though, uh, don't have me in the chat though. Yeah, it returns towards the end of series 6 with the episode, uh, closing the time. Eh. <laughs> 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 But yeah, it's an all-round episode that's actually really enjoyable, it's really fun, I think. As a concept, it's really well done. And I don't know, I, honestly, if you're watching my reviews, you hear me say those words about six times a, a video. It's a really well done concept, it's a fun episode, it's enjoyable. I really, d <laughs> especially with Series 5, specifically, I think that's almost every single episode is something to say that's very well done. But I think here, what makes it so unique is the, the obvious idea of... Um, The uh, idea that obviously the Doctor tries to be real, and obviously it's set in, in Essex and Colchester, which is near, I live in the county of Essex, not going to say where, because hashtag privacy, but uh, I do live in the county of Essex, so, um, but yeah, it's just an overall fantastically paced episode, I think to see Amy at the controls of the TARDIS is quite cool actually, uh, and then there's obviously the nice ending where uh, Amy finds the ring and it all and all hell just fucking breaks loose and that's where we will you know that's just where the next episode leads afterwards to just just a path of intriguingness really and um and it's just fun But yeah, as a whole... It... It's just an episode that I think, as a whole, does a fantastic job of... Just evaluating the, the, the setting that it's really in. And I think, personally, it's just an intriguing episode that really... I love the concept of it, I love the execution of it, uh, I think Craig's really funny, um, it's cool to see that Craig opening the door and then obviously he has that almost subplot of someone, of Craig allowing the Doctor into his life like that and then the Doctor basically taking everything from him, his job, joining the football team and getting better than him and then forcing his, almost not forcing but expressing the interest to make his uh, female lover move away, so it has that kind of thing and I think um, that's just really fun and I think that's a uh, it's a typical subplot but here it's woven into the story quite nicely hey here woven no, no pun intended shout outs to my boy woven Wolfie uh, <laughs> if you're this far in the video my man you don't know shit about fuck my man <laughs> sorry that's, a, that, that's just a Robin Williams meme that no one's gonna understand But yeah, um, it's just a fantastically well plotted episode and I just enjoy it. I, I just think it's fun. It's just really fun. It's well done. It's well structured. Uh, Craig is a fantastic character and obviously opens the door to the finale and all that lovely shiz. And I think that's fun. That's what's really fun about it. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to follow the lovely Mike Kosowski account on Twitter. And of course, I'll be doing a stream this evening with uh, Ms. Who, whose birthday is on the day of recording, 24th of July. So, happy birthday to Ms. Who. So, uh, you know, happy birthday to him. Uh, he's on YouTube as well, so I'm sure you can type in. I, I think he's in my, actually, I did remember I put him in my, uh, at least I'm 99.9% .9 sure that he's in my um, featured channels. Let me just, I 100% fact check this to make sure that he is, in fact, in that section and he is yeah Mizu there he is uh, 23 subs nice but yeah go go follow my boy uh, Mizu over there as well as everyone else in the followed section uh, happy birthday to Mizu as well and obviously it'll be a stream this evening with me Mizu and Woven hopefully at some point I don't know if it will playing the video game 
Uno, because usually me and Wolf do it in VR, but we, we, we both decided to purchase Uno for PC. I also have it on Xbox, which is stupid. Uh, but yeah, um, go check that out, streams and stuff, and you know, yeah, have a wonderful... Why do I keep saying that at the end of these things? But yeah, um, up now is review number 16, no, I'm joking. Uh, it's the review of the first part of the two-part finale of this series, series uh, 5, uh, episode... Why am I looking at series 6? That's fucking stupid. Um, episode, uh, series 5, episode 12, the Pandorica opens. The start of the two-part finale that is the Pandorica opens at the Big Bang, followed by a Christmas carol. So, thank you for being this final video. And yeah, coming up now is my review of series 5, episode 11, I think. Epi no, episode 12, the Big. No, sorry, the Pandorica, the Pandorica opens. Yee. Yeah. Okie dokie, so my review here now of Doctor Who <coughs> Series 5, Episode 12 and the first part of the two part finale, the Pandorica Opens Now the first finale of the Stephen Moffat era is the first finale to be wholly written by Stephen Moffat And it definitely sets its tone as something remarkably different from the two part finales of the previous uh, Russell D. Davis era. It's a concept that brings together River, Amy, and the Doctor, and somehow <laughs> brings Rory back into the fold, and that's fun. <laughs> On top of that, the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Sontarans, the Silurians, the Sycorax, the S Slavine, the, um, the Nesting Auton Kings, Daleks, everyone is here and I mean everyone who's anyone who's ever been a villain of the Doctor is here in force to present their attackingness but it's just a quite I mean it's opening is almost a mini story of its own tracking us through time also you know we get to see Vincent van Gogh again and we get to see Liz Ten again and um the guy with the blue head again, we see him, well, actually we haven't seen him yet, this is the first time we see him, we see River again, Liz Ten, Vincent Van Gogh, uh, Winston Churchill, and, uh, the, the one, the bomb, can't remember his name, Bracewell, Winston Churchill and Bracewell, so it's almost sort of a highlight reel, the, that opening segment is almost a highlight reel of the, of series five, and then the ending almost, is just a big, moment and like I said the second part to these episodes are always superior in almost every single way and it's just fantastic it's, it's, it's definitely not the two best two parts that Moffat's written but it is still very good, I have to admit. It's very enjoyable, and I think it really just... It really just... formates itself nicely. And I think... And I think, as a whole, it's an episode that definitely uh, leaves a lot to be desired. And I think, obviously, with the second part, that does do a lot of stuff. And I think the first part is still enjoyable, though. But it's also that, you know... That concept of Rory, Amy, that lovely scene where they share together, where they all learn about, you know, the, Amy learns to remember uh, Rory, and that's just really, really fun overall. And I also think that it means memes come out of memes. I'm joking, but it is genuinely quite her fun and her memes and her women. But, but it's still. But yeah, it's just a mix of everything, really. I like the the fact that 
with uh, carves Hello Sweetie into the oldest wall in the world and stuff. And it's really funny when it happens. And um, yeah, it's just lit. Uh, I think it's a fun episode all around. It, it definitely builds itself to that really interesting climax. But I think the ex exploration of the... Mm, um, the Romans, the use of the Romans, and then the ending that we see that it's all based off of Amy's stuff is really quite cool. It's a very explorative episode, per se, and I think that's what makes it really e e cool, personally. And I think that just elevates it above and beyond. Uh, it's not the best two part, but I still think the concept of the Pandora, it will be based off of Amy, the whole series, and I do what I like the most about it. And I, I hear something else I'm going to remember because I remember to mention this. When I was watching the video, watching the, the episode, and I'm going to mention this in a second, but I want to talk about uh, one other thing before I talk about that. And I like how it almost has been sprinkled throughout the entire series. Sure, there's arcs in other series that are set up quite well, but I feel like one here is set up with more depth and detail than any other arc before. Uh, like a whole series arc has been set up before, it's been set up here with the most depth, all the way from the very first episode. And it's not, some of them are quick, just single shots, but there are moments where they actually go in depth about, you know, so cracks in the wall and stuff and I think that's really well done but another thing I want to mention is there's two scenes where the music really does play an intriguing part to it and by this I mean obviously back all the way back in series two Murray Gold wrote a the Cybermen theme the Cybermen Q as I like to call it um and I think not I don't think but it is actually used here in such good places and, and, and that melody was used quite a lot throughout series two through four and uh, I think it's a fantastic piece and to see it come back in a, in a time where a lot of the previous themes are going to disappear or, or, or what going to come back was really really interesting and um to hear that na, 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 it was really 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 reminiscing and refreshing and after you know just watching the series back to, to hear that na, 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 na. Like, like I said that cue is really well placed here and it's obviously appears twice in the episode that I, I can recall when I watched it and it's, it's a good cue and I just I think that's a nice little thing to, to note out I think personally that it's just, it's just a cool concept all around. But yeah, it's just all round fun. It's just, again, the Eleventh Doctor shines here, so does River. I, I was just thinking, River's one of these really fun characters who really does feel like the only person who could come close to being on the same level as the Doctor. And I think that really shows. That really shows in some circumstances. And yeah, it's just, it's a great to be part of and it's a lot of fun. And yeah, that's been my review of this. So I welcome and thank you for being this fun video. And yeah, uh, now is my review of uh, series 12, uh, series 12, series 5, episode 12, the pa uh, sorry, series 5, episode 13, the Big Bang coming at you right about now. Away, man. Right, so welcome to my review of Doctor Who, series 5, the finale. <coughs> i.e. Doctor Who Series 5 Episode 13 uh, Episode 13 The Big Bang Now, as with pretty much every single episode like I've previously mentioned it, with the two part of the second part is obviously always significantly just more enjoyable than the previous part that's just a fact and this episode definitely has that to the fact from the opening with Little Amelia to uh, you know to the sending the Pandora back into the sky, to uh, the absolutely just wonderful ending of it all. That's just fantastic. The whole final 10, 10 20 minutes of this episode is fantastic. All of it makes for a very, in just a fantastically well rounded off ending for a series that I've always loved. It's, a, it's an even Steven series, if you ask me. It's had some extreme highs like the 11th hour but actually not that many lows to be quite frank as we'll explore in the Christmas Carol review on when I get to review the series because I think like with all the previous series I've always mentioned a weakest episode or the worst episode in this case it really is the weakest episode and I actually 
can't really decide what episode I would give that title to purely because everything is so fun. I'm, I'm aiming towards the beast below, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But yeah, like, the whole two parts is fantastic. It's absolutely a fun-filled journey. I think I like the whole idea of... One of my favourite aspects of this episode is the t uh, when the Doctor keeps on using the Vortex Manipulators to jump back in time to lay what we see at the towards the beginning of the episode into motion. So the, the stuff like when he goes back to tell Wally to do what he does, to sit in front of the thing, blah, 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 that, 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 that. so... But yeah, I think it's just a fantastically well... Out, out, out of, like, ranking the finales is something I, I, I might do. But I also am doing a top 10 movie, movie a top 10 movies as of, as of now, soon. So stay tuned for that, it's coming out soon. And I think, interestingly, I think all of the movies that are on that list have been reviewed on, on my channel already. Which does make sense, if you really think about it. Only three of the top 10 movies haven't been reviewed on my channel, but I'm not going to say what they are. But, uh... Like I said, it's just a vibrantly fantastic episode. It... How can I say this without really... Uh, what's the word here? It's magnificently fun. Uh, like I said, The 11th Doctor has always been my favourite, and I think this episode definitely... Definitely, definitely points out that point to a fucking awesome level to the point where he really is just he is my favorite doctor this is a fact i can i can tell you that you know he is my favorite doctor and you know it's just You know, it's just all about, it's fun, it's about coming together as a family, it's about just enjoying everything, and I think at the end of the day, it's just enjoyable really. It's just an all round fantastically fun episode, I think, as a whole, it's, it's just really fun. And at the end of the day, it's just fun. It's just a genuinely fantastic episode that I, I really do enjoy. I think it's fantastic. I think it really is fantastic. It really is just a, 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 a special episode. But yeah, it's just, it's just fun. It's, it's, it's a very, very enjoyable episode. It's an episode that, for me personally, uh, I think it, it just, uh, Fezzes. Fezzes, this is the episode that introduces the uh, 11th Doctor to F Fez, which is one of his most divining, um, you know, um, But, you know, it's just fun. Uh, you know, it's just more enjoyable. You know, it's just a fun, fantastic, um... 
you know, it's, it's, it's an all-round brilliant episode, I know I keep on saying it, and I think, you know... It's, uh, I'm sorry this is a very unusual review, but I'm really struggling, personally, to find other, th you know, stuff to say about these episodes that aren't. It's a fun episode, it's fantastic, it's well written, it's well done, and it's really struggling for me. And I know a lot of people say, then write a fucking script, but I, I just, I feel easier just going freehand on my thoughts and feels. And like I said, I think it definitely is a point where a lot of people seem to think that this is where the show has gone into, Stephen Moffat's writing specifically, the plots are very non-consistent and I, and I just have to disagree I just think it makes it more fun to see how d these outcomes can come and I think it's fantastic the series 5 as a whole has been absolutely brilliant and I can't wait to delve deeper into the rest of series 5 uh, or the end of series 5 and series 6 and the entire uh, 11th Doctor's uh, era as well as the 12th and 13th but don't forget today 6pm UK time I'm recording this on the 25th the day this video is scheduled to go up 6pm UK time today epic series 13 their trailer I might do a trailer reaction, don't think so, but who knows, trailer reaction, if you want to see a trailer reaction, comment below, I suppose, but yeah, um, yeah, that's really a second channel video though, but yeah, thank you for uh, watching and have a, uh, uh, thank you for getting this far in the video, I keep on fucking doing that, come out next is my view of a Christmas carol, the Christmas special of series 5, uh, the 2010 Christmas special for series 5 that I bundled with series 5 because it came out in 2010, so fuck you. And yeah, that's reviews coming out right now, so have a little bit better and enjoy that review coming out your face now. Well, so, series 5, the Christmas special called A Christmas Cow. Now, pers personally, A Christmas Cow is an episode that obviously, while having very little Amy and Rory obviously focuses on the main characters of Abigail and Kazran Sardi. I don't know what Abigail's second name is, they're not no, as I know of yet, but still, it focuses around those two main characters. And I think it also, um, just, just, I think it's a fantastic rendition of a classic story. But also, it's changed to a way... That, you know, it's changed to the way... So, it fits with the Doctor Who... Uh, it fits with the um, the way Doctor Who is structured, and I think it, it's obviously fitted perfectly to that specific um, iteration of it. And I think, but yeah, I think overall it's just it's a fantastic episode. That really, I like how it obviously all pans out in the way that it does and I think I think as a whole it's just a, it's just a story that I, I personally I just think that like I said it's a fantastic rendition of Christmas Cow and to see the character of Kazan Sardik you know change through the ways and Abigail and the singing stuff is really fantastic Michael Gambon does a fantastic performance as you know that and I think that's what really makes it But yeah, as a whole, I think it's just a fantastic... Again, My God's music is on top form here as well. And I think, at the end of the day, it really just represents a big... I think it's just a... a it's just a great episode, really. I think, as a whole, it's just an episode that I, I think... It's just, I mean, like, like I said, it's a fantastic retelling of the classic story. I think, at the end of the day, it really sort of... The character of Kazan and Sardik is fun, but also hateful at the same time. And I like how it shows his character, his progression through all of his actual years as a child, as a teenager and stuff like that. And that's what really makes it... 
interesting. And obviously, the concept of us all relaying, waiting on this to ship to come down. It's definitely one of the best Christmas specials in the series' history. And I have to admit, it's a great way to start off the Christmas specials of the 11th Doctor, which do go some interesting ways, to say the least. But, um, <laughs> we'll get to that eventually. And I think that really marks that point in the Doctor Who series history. That... I suppose it really... <laughs> it's just a very, very well... Replicated story, really. And I think that really... That really lands it as a story that I think could really be expanded upon in, in characters. And I'd love to see Kazran and, and Abigail return it in a future story. That would be really fantastic. But I also think that personally it could use with a bit of light work in the script and light work in um, other moments as well. But, yeah, it's just fun, really. Like I said, it's a uh, shout-out to everyone, Catherine Jenkins and everyone performance-wise, Catherine Jenkins, Michael Gambon, obviously Matt Smith and, and um, uh, Matt Smith, Karen Gillen and uh, Arthur Darville are, you know, fantastic performance-wise here. It's all just fun at the end of the day. And, um... Like I said, it's just an all-round fun episode. It it's the right length. It tells the right story. The the ghost of future past, future present, and fu uh, the ghost of Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas future. It's it's a really great spin on a very well executed concept by at Charles. Uh, whoever I can't was it. I'm an idiot. It was yes, it was Charles Dickens. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot, but yeah, it's just a, like I said. Model story is it's, it's it's fun. That's all I can say. And I think it really resonates with a lot of you know. It just it's just a fact. Like I said, it came out. You know, Christmas specials were still Christmas specials. See now, that's changed a lot. But I still think, at the end of the day, um, it's just fun. What more can I say? It's just fun. It's just fun episode, and I just want to say that, yeah, that's about really my thoughts and feels that episode. And now we're going to just talk about series five as a whole, uh, and obviously come to our sort of end of series review. Now, series five. Obviously, it's a very important series for, if you're talking about the history of the show at the time, it was a very important series because it had to show to the world that after the departure of the face of Doctor Who for the last four years, and someone who really defined the show, a lot of people were sceptical when Matt Smith was announced. And obviously, what makes it even more intriguing is, you know, I think at the time, both Matt Smith and Karen Gill and the two main leads were relatively unknown at the time so casting these two unknowns as the big part as the two biggest roles in this series especially considering Gillen had appeared in a previous episode of Doctor Who the uh, series 4 episode um, the fires of Pompeii uh, series 4 episode 2 so having been so close to her actual run as a companion in the series was very interesting but it was a very important series at the time and it had to prove to the world that the series could go without um, David Tennant and without the 10th Doctor and I think that is exactly what it did it proved to the world that not only can Stephen Moffat be a very good show and not only is Matt Smith the best Doctor in my opinion not only is Amy and Clara some of the best companions the series has had obviously not Clara at this point you know what I mean but also that it really had to prove the point of the series can continue with great writing great editing and obviously the upgraded music and I think that's exactly what it does it's really it's, it's one of the series i think the series app so far that i've seen that's the most consistent with its quality of episodes there isn't any episodes that are really shit there is all just basically all on the same level except for i think i want to say like three or four episodes i mean like uh, mainly the, the the definitive episode of the series is by 
by far the 11th power, but then obviously stuff like Hungry Earth and Cold Blood is really, I love that episode. And then obviously even the Pandora opens Big Bang and Christmas Carol are fantastic episodes. And Amy choices, Amy's choices, but as well. So there's a lot to be loved, and there was a and there was little to nothing to be hated. I think for me, obviously, uh, the best episode is the 11th power for me. So, and the weakest episode, I'm just gonna say the Beast Below because I, I uh, I've not I don't like the Beast Below. I do think it's a fun episode, but I don't know. I just it's the only one I can really think is weak. No, it's not even weak. It's just I think the the plot of it's not the most fun thing in the world. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still a very enjoyable episode and I'm not saying it's bad at all. I just think it has a weak plot in some elements and I think that's really what lets it down. But yeah, as a whole, Series 5, uh, obviously, let's just do out of 10. So, 11 powers are 10, Beast Below, 8, Victory of the Daleks, no, sorry, no, Beast Below, 7, Victory of the Daleks, 8, Time of the Angels, Fashion Stone, 8, Vampires of Venice, 8, Amy's Choice, 9, Hungry Earth, Cold Blood, 10, Vincent and the Doctor, 8, The Lodger, 9, The Pandora Opens, 8, The Big Bang, 10, and The Big Bang, 9, and The Christmas Carol, 9 as well. So, I, like I said, the most solid series we've had so far, and as a whole, I give, this, I give the series, I give it a 10. I give it a 10 as a whole, because it's a really, really solid series, and it deserves that 10. So, yeah, <laughs> like I said, I the 11th Doctor is my favourite Doctor, and all these episodes to me prove that the 11th Doctor is the ultimate Doctor, and uh, he'll always be my favourite Doctor until maybe the next one but uh, don't get me wrong I still have pleasant soft spots for 12 and 13 because obviously those are the Doctors that I have grown up with obviously I say grown up with I was I watched Series 8 religiously and Series 9 didn't see Series 10 and I've obviously been watching 11 and 12 religiously as well so yeah uh, and obviously a lot of people have their opinions of the current state of the show I think it's thriving I think Chibnall's alright I think he, he knows what he's doing he just needs to push himself I personally I think he knows what he's doing he knows how to write it, but he's not pushing himself to, to the level that we've seen him before. Stuff as Hungry Earth and uh, like, like that episode. If he if he could turn out episodes like that again, then we could be seeing some of the best run of the soap show's history. But if he keeps on churning out stuff like Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, then it's gonna be, you know, not not so good. But like I said, the Eleventh Doctor is the definitive Doctor for me, in my opinion. I, I don't get me wrong. I still love Twelve. I love Thirteen. I love Nine, and I love Ten. But Eleven for me is the definitive Doctor. Amy and Clara are the best companions the show has had in a very long time, and Twelve and Clara are fantastic as well. Uh, it just makes me want to kind of see Twelve and Amy at the same time, but I also really want to see Eleven, Amy, and Captain Jack in the same room. Would have been finale, but you know we don't always get what we want. Or Twelve, Clara, and Jack, Captain Jack in the same room in the same episode would have been finale too. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this over an hour and a half episode of the review series. As you can see, I passionately care a lot about the Eleventh Doctor and his series. So uh, yeah. This has been my review of Doctor Who Series 5, Doctor Who Series 6 review is coming up as soon as I can get it done. Uh, I definitely will be doing a trailer reaction to the Series 13 trailer and I'm definitely going to be posting that on the second channel so stay tuned for that later on this evening. So yeah, have a wonderful, wonderful day and don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button, that like button, go follow all the Twitters, the two Twitters I have, the unfunny one and my main one. Uh, the Twitch channel will be streaming Uno, don't forget to check out the uh, the the stream archive from yesterday's stream on the stream archive channel. I had a blast playing Uno with my mate, with my good friends, um, my good friends Woven, uh, Mizu, and Zaru. So go check that out. It's a blast. It was funny. It was a lot of fun. So we hope to play more Uno soon. I just want to play stuff like Forza Street and Indoorlands coming back. Uh, this Doctor Who series thing is is been big for me, and I hope to get all the series done before the end. Before the end of September would be preferable, but uh, it's looking quite. <laughs> I know that's a stretch. Uh, maybe the end of August would be nice, but I, I can't see that happening unless, like I said, I can do a video in two days, so I should be able to get most of these out quite quickly. But it just takes more time for me personally, but yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, and uh, yeah, just go and enjoy the world, and have fun. And come and see my view of Doctor Who Series 6. Bye-bye for now. Alright, so there you have it. Hello, this is Future Me, recording this on the 27th of July, on the day that this video should go up, you know. Just thought I'd have a bit of an epilogue before I roll that outro. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, thanks for, if you are this far in the video, I'm looking at the time at the moment, this is nearly, I want to get this, you know, uh, nearly a, a two hour video. So if you are still here at this point, you are a real one. But like I said, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. 
this has been one of the most messiest reviews I've ever had to do in terms of just editing and getting out and stuff. So I really hope that this that I'm recording now is on YouTube. If it isn't, then I am then if it isn't on YouTube, then I have probably deleted my channel by now. <laughs> if it is on YouTube, then well, the BBC decided not to block it worldwide like they did with the last fucking one. So uh, yeah, but like I said, it's been. Interesting, I spent the last two hours sat in front of my computer screen just letting this record and I've not left the house. So, uh, you know, it's just interesting. And all I want to say is I appreciate everyone who's watching the videos and the Twitch streams are definitely going to get more stuff. And I just want to say that making these really long, almost movie length videos is not deterring me from making the future movie reviews and I just want to know that they will be the return to the short 10 minute 10 minute ish movie reviews in after this is all done I don't think I'm going to be spit going to start talking about fucking uh, Fast and Furious 9 for two hours because I don't think I have the ability to do that so <laughs> you're not going to see a two hour video documentary about me talking about my opinions of Fast and Furious 9 you'll see a 10 minute video 10 20 minute video of me talking about Fast and Furious 9 but for now uh I just want to say that I look forward to series 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 and obviously at this point that I'm speaking to you the series 13 first trailer has been released and obviously I just want to go over a few things that I mentioned at the end of what you just heard that weren't true. I never did upload a trailer action and I'm not going to. I, I decided against that and we did in fact do another Uno session with the boys. We did that. That was uh, yesterday and it's now up on the Stream Archive channel. So go check that out. Do follow the Michael Wazzo Twitter account. Um, but yeah, no, I um I look forward to more reviews. I've got a way of watching movies that are in the cinema at, at, uh, when they come out uh, at the same time they're in the cinema legally, by the way. So uh, hopefully I, I'd like to use that, utilize that soon. But at the moment I can't really. I've seen old, but I can't really do a review of that because I don't want it to be put out in between Doctor Two reviews. And I'm seeing the Suicide Squad on Friday, and I don't want to put a review out for that in between it. So I want to be able to at some point in time utilize that feature of having to be able to see these movies that are at the theatre. Specifically, you know, the Black Widow is one of the big ones like that. And Jungle Cruise and stuff like that, and and Spiral, which I've got a Blu-ray. I know it's not the cinema at the moment, but f fuck off. But yeah, like I said, it's been this has been a fantastic, fantastic journey. I truly appreciate, you know, people sticking this long into the fucking video. It is mad. Uh, yeah, like I said, I just want to give a few shout outs to some people that have helped me along the way to get to d deal with the situation and let me vent about it. So I want to shout out to Woven. Wolfie, uh, to Mizu, to Cinder the Fox, for all these people for helping me try and sort this stuff out and that. And I know Cinder didn't really do particularly, but I, I just want to shout him out because he definitely was, you know, comment about it in the Twitch stream and stuff like that. And a big shout out to Mizu because he did try and help me earlier today with, um, you know, setting this thing up and finishing it up. So a big shout out to Mizu, big shout out to Woven for helping me with all of this stuff. Big shout out to them. Go follow them on, I believe they're all on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram. Go follow all of them. I don't, I'm not 100% sure about Cinder the Fox because he's a he's a Twitch follower, but I do know because they're quite close friends of mine that Mizu and, and Woven are both on Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and Twitch. So go follow all that stuff. If you want to find his YouTube channel, it's in my featured channel section. Go check that out. Same with Woven. Both their channels in the featured channel selection. So, this has been an experience. This has been two hours of my life. This has been four weeks of my life. This has been... A very long time that I'm never going to get back to the fact that the BBC fucked me over the first time I uploaded this video. But if you're still here, at the 1 hour and 58 minute mark of this video, I really appreciate you. This is definitely going to be a 2 hour long video, as it already is. And um, I never expected it to be this long. It shouldn't be this long. In fact, I should probably end it now because I still have like... 40-30 seconds of footage to put either end of it, but I'm going to end it at the 2 hour mark. So, yeah, just just thank you for allowing me to speak about what I love. I'm enjoying doing the YouTube at the moment as much as I really did have a point where I was thinking, is it worth it if they're just going to block everything? But I'm still going to do it. I want to also work on um, my delivery and stuff like that. And I do know, I, listening back to this one, I speak so fast and a lot of the stuff I say can't be <laughs> easily understood. So I'm trying to work on ways of slowing the speech down and, um, you know making it more listenable and easier to uh, understand and stuff. So I'm hoping that maybe I can work. <laughs> the Series 6 is where I'm going to really try and push it. And also, I hope you enjoyed the intro and the outro. I spent uh, uh, at least two hours working on the uh, the outro. Well, specifically the intro, actually. The outro didn't take much effort. 
I, I the, the outro it took me about five minutes to get that together to get it working but the intro it took me at least an hour and a half to get all the clips together i had a set of clips put them together then i wanted to then i had other clips that i wanted to put i had originally i had to uh the, as you've seen the final scenes of that outro release video clips were a scene from the fast and Fu from the fast and Fu and a scene from loki but reversed so uh but originally those two clips were going to be clips of Alton towers but i realized that if this if, if that's an intro for the main channel which it is there's no point because it's not about theme park, so I can't really, you know, put that there. So I just replace it with some different stuff. So yeah, but yeah, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to hit the other, hit those videos. Cue that outro.